Um, well, good afternoon. Um, I'm uh, Bert Belder, you already know that. Uh, I work for Cloud9, um, which is, we build this awesome web IDE with, which you can use to uh, program JavaScript with. Um, and my, my major job is actually not working on Cloud9 itself, but it's working on Node. Um, that's my full-time job, has been for one and a half year or so. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about today is uh, not about Node, but something that underlies Node, which is called uh, LibUV, as you understood. I'm gonna show you a lot of C. Um, don't get scared, but I'm just interested, who here has ever written some C? Okay, ah. I don't believe you guys, <laughs> but. <laughs> Oh, let's, um, let's look at this very old picture. This is an old picture, an, a very old version of Node, version four. It, um, it has this architecture. So basically you have like the stuff that Majid uh, talked about just before this. And then underlying that is V8 and there's two libraries which are called um, libEIO and libEV which basically do all the event magic, right? Um, <clears throat> so what, what, what an event loop does is um, if, if you use a framework like, I don't know, PHP that does blocking I.O., you, you will find that like every single call like writing to a file or loading something from the internet can, will block your thread for a sm small amount of time. And in Node, you know, this never happens. And that's because we, we actually do block because Node will idle when you do not do anything. Um, but all this blocking happens in a, like a central location. We, there is, and that's, that's what we call the event loop. There's always this, this constant flow of we sleep for a while and then when something happens, like the kernel, like your operating system is gonna wake us up and we're gonna make your callbacks and then we're going to sleep again. Um, so we, we used to use libEV for that and libEV is, uh, is, is basically a wrapper around a function called select and there's other variants of that. Select is very old and it's almost on every operating system but it's very slow as well. Um, and um, it will, libv will tell us when something happens to a particular file descriptor and a file descriptor could for example be a socket, a network connection. So calling select is a, is a little bit like this. Um, this is a game that like um, retired people play in Holland. It's called Bingo. Um, it, you, you put all the, all the numbers in a big wheel and then you rotate until a couple come out and then you're like, oh, number 45, do I have this on my card? You try to match it with on your card. And that's also how select works. You put like all sockets, you put them in a big wheel and you, you rotate until um, the kernel will say, hey, here's a number. You, there's something happening with this socket. Okay, um, <clears throat> we, we also use another library, let me short, mention it shortly, it's called libeio. Th this, this wheel model is not working very well for like regular files because well, what does it mean if suddenly something happened to a file? Can you then like, what can you do to it? Can you read the end or the beginning or can, I mean, this, that doesn't add up. So you can't use it for files, which is why we have this thread pool where we run all kinds of, um, of, of stuff that we don't do with this wheel. So by using these two libraries, um, Node was actually making a couple of assumptions and that those were not entirely true. So the first one is that the select model actually is a good model. Um, and it is sort of a good model, but we don't go, we, we don't settle for okay, we want to go for the best. And um, the select model didn't work for us that well. Also, um, like libv provided us with the wheel, with the, with the way to do that on every platform, but um, there's more stuff you want to do. You just want to write to a file at some point. You know, you can write, now you're going to write. And that does not work the same everywhere. And this was majorly the problem when we started to do Windows stuff, but because in Windows everything is different. So we start, used to, if you ever ever written like uh, C that runs on multiple platforms, you st start doing like if devs in your code and becomes a big mess. And that's what, what we ended up in, at the end of the 04 uh, uh, branch. It was a big mess. And we were like, yeah, this has to stop. Let's put it all in a, in a container. And the other assumption is, all, is that file operations really must be done in a thread pool. And that's sort of questionable, although we still do that. It may go away at some point. Um, 
So, well, replace those, make it libuv. And libuv, instead of using this select model, we wanted to use another concept, another, um, another ID. Uh, we don't want this bingo wheel. What we want to do is start stuff. Like in Node, what you do, if you do, for example, a, a stat of a file or you make a connection, then it you, it's basically queued. It, it's dropped off somewhere where you can see it, but at some point it's done and it comes back to you. And that's the model that we wanted. Um, so that's how it works. Um, and we wanted to su support like different um, models. So not only the Slack model, but in Windows there's a better model and we wanted to do that well. And on Linux there may be another model and maybe we're going to use that. Um, so it's, it's about offering the best support on every platform. Um, and yeah, focus on embeddability and performance. That's important. You know, for example, there are competing libraries, LibEvent. They are not so good at performance, and there are other libraries that are not so easy to embed. But we w didn't want to make a library that helps you write C. We want to, to make a library that helps us write Node, and other people write competitors to Node, and that's fine. Um, and so that's, that's why that was the focus. And yeah, we had to plaster over all the OS quirks, and there are quite a lot, I can tell you. I mean, if you, you like Mac OS a lot, and that's totally fine, and I am happy that it works here. Um, but also that has a lot of quirks that we have to plaster over. Um, and it should look a little bit like LibUV, because like the look of it we liked. Okay, and so what, what LibUV, LibUV ended up being is like Node, but without all these parts. You can think of it that way, like subtract the JavaScript, there is no HTTP support and no crypto, but then what's left is LibUV. And we really thought of it like we want to be the drill sergeant, right? I mean, get, get all the operating systems in line, yay. And unfortunately, it ends up being like this. Um, you have to like free the pipes and pull the shit out. Now, I'm going to show you something, um, a little bit how it looks if you actually use libuv. This is, a, uh, this is not a line of C code, it's uh, in Node. What you do is uh, we connect to a, a site and then we write like the HTML or whatever comes out and the HTTP headers to the standard out. And after this talk, you will also understand why you really want to use Node and not libuv to do this stuff. Um, well, let's, let's get started. So is, is this uh, wire long enough? Let's get, see. I'm going to be the teacher here, so I'm going to actually point at stuff. OK, suppose we wanted to, um, we, we, we are going to download the website nyam.cat or whatever and, um, and, and print it to standard out. So where do we start? Well, first what we're going to do is, um, is, is resolve the DNS address. So um, what we're going to do is like start this background operation where, where you, like, you can, uh, where LibUV makes sure you get the DNS address and then wait for it to return. So what we first have to do is like allocate some, some space for it. And I'm going to explain to you why that is later. This is like memory associated with this thing that happens in the background. And then we're just going to make the call. We're going to say, gonna say UV get adder info. We give it some stuff. It's not all that interesting, but you can see the, the address and the port here. And this one is, a, is the callback. And this is the space we just allocated. Um, and after that, you know, in Node automatically starts its event loop, but um, libuv doesn't. I mean, it's C, it, it can't even do that. So you have to call uv run, and if you're, if you're in there, then stuff actually starts happening. So <clears throat> uh, a little bit about that space that you allocated. So we call this, I, I told you about the concept of we want to abstract events that happen in the background. We, we call these things, we call them requests. So there's a sort of class hierarchy in here, like everything or, or a lot of things are requests. And for example, get adder info is a request, write is a request, stat and connect and blah, blah, blah. It's, yeah, it's a little bit like a promise. So it's like an opaque object that represents something that happens in, in the future. And, and it's like we make you responsible for memory management and that has all, everything to do with, with uh, embeddability because now what we can do is, for example, when you're Node, you not only allocate some memory for libuv to use, but only also for Node, because Node has to track some more state. And it makes it more performant and more easier to, easier to manage. And if you're working on another project that uses libuv, you can use the same trick. Um, so these are, these are requests. So 
Now let's look at the callback. Like what happens if it comes back? Well, first of all, we get this, this piece of memory back because LibUV is now done with it. We get a status and the status basically means like if it's zero, then it went well. And if it's minus one, in this case, it, it failed. So I'm not handling it here. I'm just, well, in this case, we should really print an error or whatever. Um, and then the next step is going to be, okay, we now have resolved the DNS address. We're going to, um, we're going to make a connection to this site. So we have to allocate some memory again. Because, and this time it's for a handle. And I, I mean, I'll explain what a handle is in a minute. It's a TCP handle in this case. It represents a TCP connection and we initialize it with this function. And then we're going to make another rec similar to the get adder info thing. And we're going to say, okay, use this use this rack and this handle connect this and connect it to basically the, the answer that we got back from get adder info that contains all the information about the IP address that we want to connect to. And then, okay, we, we got this get adder info back and we're um, not uh, going to use it anymore. So we're going to clean it up at the end with free. All right. Are, do you, do you guys still follow or is, or is it like who, who doesn't like, and who does? And who didn't raise his hand before? <laughs> OK. Ah, there's still a few liars in the audience that I will call you. No. Never mind. OK. So um, remember the uh, TCP uh, handle uh, that, I, that I created here? Um, there's also a sort of class hierarchy in that. Because um, like these, ha these, these handles are actually sort of em event emitters or stream in Node. I mean, like something that happens on the background, you can do that with, with connecting or writing or whatever. But if you, if you start a server, for example, then like you don't ask for someone to connect to you. It just happens. I mean, so we, we needed something to, to emit events on its own. And that's basically the abstraction that UV handle T is. So um, there's some stuff, for example, UDP and timers that don't really um, that, that, that are not streams, but they're still sort of event emitters. And then there's like the TTY, which is your like, yeah, thing you type in, and, the, and pipes, and, and, and network connections. Th those are actually streams. And the rules are very simple for those. You can create them with like UV type in it, for example, UV TTY in it, or TCP in it. And then after a while, you have to close them again. Um, and, and you are re still responsible for, for allocating this memory and because uh, LibUV will not do it for you. OK, so remember we, we said, OK, after get adder info, we're going to um, make a connection. And what do we after the connection is made? This is the callback. Um, well, same story again. If the status is smaller than 0, it, we, it, it went wrong, but we assume it went right in this case. And then we're going to do the same trick. We're going to make a write request. And we're going to put some stuff in memory. And then we're going to say UV write and put a lot of stuff in there. Um, basically, um, which is going to do the write in the background. It's not, it's not that complicated. Uh, now, the, now here's something special. This is UV read start. Um, basically, not only do we want to send like the request to this server, like the get request, but we also want to like start receiving data from the other end. So this one, as you can see, there's no rec associated with it because similar to accepting connections, um, reading also doesn't happen because you ask it, but it just happens. Um, but we put in the handle and we can get it back from the connect request that was easy. And we give it two callbacks. And that's, that's very important. Um, like, um, LibUV will call your read callback when, it's, uh, when it has re read something. But when it's about to read something, then it needs memory to, to put it. So it will first call one callback, and then you have to give it some memory. And then it will read into that memory, and then it will give that back to you. It's, it sounds complicated, but for Node, this is really a solution. Um, because in Node, we cannot, we cannot have like memory that comes from another source. We actually have to create buffers for it. And you know you can't do, really do that in C. Um, well, yeah, that's, uh, that's all for this function. So well, this, this allocation callback, like LibUV needs memory. It's easy. It suggests a size. So we can, in this case, we can just use a C function called malloc to get, get it and return the, the, the base pointer and the length that we actually allocated, because you, get, you don't have to 
uh, adhere to this suggested size. Um, and when, when data comes in, also easy, uh, um, it's the same pattern again. If, if, if we got a negative number back, it went wrong, or it was the end, like the, the server said, I have nothing more for you. Um, and otherwise, well, we can print it. So as you can see, actually, I mean, the, if you're not familiar with C, it might be a little, um, you, you might not have come up with this yourself so far, but it's really not that hard to do. Um, it's just much more tedious than in Node, because remember, in Node, all these functions were on one line. Um, oh, we, then we have UV closed, let's skip that. Um, so let's try if, it's wor if it works. Actually, I, this is just sort of a recording. It, this is how you would compile it with GCC. Um, we have to, in this case, we, we specify demo.c. Let's assume that I put all this function in demo.c and then we link with uv.a or library and some other stuff that belongs to the operating system. And yes, that just works. And now you probably expected like um, uh, weird music and cats. But no, um, writing a browser, that will be uh, my next talk, but not yet. Um, so what can libuv do for you? If you, like, I just showed you some small parts, but it can do a lot. Um, it, there's a lot of stuff in there. TCP, DNS, timers and other primitives, file system operations, child processes, everything you can imagine, we do it for you. File system events has to be improved. But we want to do more stuff. It can still be better. Um, for example, uh, we want to queue more, as you can see, we had to do like get adder info and then connect and then write. But why not write it all like as, as a sequence and then libuv will figure out in which order it to do. We want to be able to do this. Um, so that's one of the future things. Streams should also be just streams. You don't have to, should not have to worry about it being TCP or whatever. I mean, it's all readable and that kind of stuff. Add triggered epo is a trick. Well. We, we want to do that on Linux because it will just make Linux faster and, uh, well, people care about that apparently. And um, the same for file, the file system um, abstraction is a little weird at the moment, but we, oh, those two should just be streams. Um, and they should be a lot faster because if you right now in Node use files, you will notice that mwah, it, it's doable, but you don't want to write uh, like an engine, Nginx competitor right now with it. Okay, so beyond Node, there are all, we are no longer the only one. Um, a, a couple of interesting projects here are, for example, Ross is a new language, a new low-level language that Mozilla is designing. Julia is, um, is I, I created by, I think, MIT, and they, uh, they focus on scientific computation. Um, PyUV is, is a binding for uh, Python, um, and, and Lovit is probably the most well-known one. It, it allows you to do Lua, to write Lua and, and have all the features of Node, basically. It's very awesome, check it out. Um, and maybe yesterday I heard a G-Event. G-Event is like a very well-known um, coroutine library for Python, might also be using us, so very cool. Well, that's it. I hope I don't went over time too much. If you want to learn more about LibUV, like some guy started writing a book about it, and um, this, this is really, it gives you all the details. Um, we, we are not very good at documenting stuff, but someone just sued up. Awesome. I love open source. Thank you very much.